You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. I can do those things, because I'm not a hero. I'm whatever Gotham needs me to be. They'll hunt you. You'll hunt me. You'll condemn me. Set the dogs on me. Because that's what needs to happen. Because sometimes, the truth isn't good enough. Sometimes, people deserve more. Sometimes, people deserve to have their faith rewarded. <sighs> you know what? <laughs> like they said on The Dark Knight, right? If you live long enough, if a hero lives long enough, he lives to see himself as a villain. <laughs> he really does. Go put that at the very beginning of the piece because it really is apropos. It really is. Uh, this Will Smith thing, man, which I thought was going to be minor at first. I thought it would blow over within a week. I thought it would have legs for maybe, you know, like I said, a good, a good news cycle. Man, this is, to me, it's going to be a defining moment as far as the black community is concerned. And not for the standard reasons, because this wasn't even about racism. No white people were harmed or were involved in this situation. This was black people, the Eidos black people in full view, defining who they really are. In a few seconds, when in just a few seconds, I do mean a few seconds, for him to tell the joke and for Will Smith to walk on stage and slap him, took only maybe, it didn't even take 30 seconds. In a few seconds, it shows exactly who we are as a culture, as a people. No anamorphous things, no fuzzy logic, none of that, right? Clear definition about who we are as a people who really is important in this Eidos culture that I call a gynocracy. And the gynocracy is on full fledged. And I always said it wasn't really about the women. I mean, the women are a issue. But the thing is, is that the gynocracy is working the way it's supposed to work with the consent of the men. Now here in the red pill space, we talk about modifying the gynocracy. Never talked about ending it. Because at the end of the day, 90%, I would say a good 90%, maybe even a little more, of black men agree with the gynocracy. How do I know that? Look at Will Smith. Look at the incident. Now, the dividing line is 50-50, whether he should have smacked her, should have smacked Chris or not, okay? Some guys think it was righteous he went up and smacked him. And some guys think that the other half thinks that it wasn't right for him to smack him, okay? Everybody says it shouldn't happen on international TV, not just national TV, for the whole world to see it. And the vast majority of black men, even the ones that say that it shouldn't have happened, there's always a but. But black women care about their hair. Black women feel bad if you talk about their hair. Black women have, have this inferiority complex about the way they look. And if you mention how the way they look, you have you, a black man should step to that man that made a joke about it and smack him, especially if it's his wife. And guess what? Were there a handful of white people that said that? A handful of others that said that? Yeah, but the sprinkling is so small, it's almost imperceptible. And we're not talking about the average everyday people walking around on the street. We're talking about celebrities that sign up for it. The sign up to be Jones Dawn. The signs up sign up to be talked about. And sit in the front row, knowing that you're gonna get talked about. That doesn't matter. It's always a but. Black women, my wife needs to be protected from any slight whatsoever. Now the Laverne Cox was a transgender when right in front of them when she's interviewed them, they talked about entanglements. Did Will Smith slap her or him or whatever you want to call it? When there are other jokes that were actually lodged at Jada and Will. Did they go on stage and slap them? No. But you saw another black man talking about a black woman's hair, and that gave the butt, the entree, to actually step to another man over a tiny joke that lasted less than five seconds. That was part of the act. That was part of the experience that you signed up for. Now, I've heard comedians talking about giving oral sex to a certain woman, even with her husband sitting next to her, because it was supposed to be funny, and she laughs it off because it's part of the experience, but because your wife rolls her eyes over a G.I. Jane joke, which is very tiny, you go off, which really I don't believe that it was real. I think it was scripted. Personally, I believe it was scripted. 
that aside, that's not the issue. And as Marcus Keep It 100 said last night, a chip got activated. The, the gynocratic, gynocracy chip got activated where you have to protect the queen at all costs over, over any slights. And I thought, you know, there'd be a sprinkling of guys, you know, there's always a white knight here or there. Sprinkling the guys where I should come out and say, you know what, uh, I'd have stepped to him too. And that's, but I thought the vast majority of guys said, hey, you know what, she got to get a thicker skin. She, that's what she signed up. Sit down and be quiet because you're a celebrity. You're in the spotlight. It comes with the territory. It's always a but. Well, if he had made a different joke or if he talked about her having sex with August, which I think is even worse, or any one or other off-color jokes that they could have made about the couple. He didn't make it. He made the tiniest, most innocuous joke that lasted for like two seconds. And then said, what? It was, yeah, come on now. Even he said, come on now, that was a, that was a little one. But to see 90% of black men line up uh, with the butt. Now, when this first started a week ago, man, I thought, you know, it's no big deal. It's just stars doing what they do. And it's Will Smith trying to change his image and raise his brand. And most people said that it wouldn't raise his brand. What actually, actually hurt his brand, actually hurt his career. And maybe amongst white people, it might. But amongst black people, black women and black men, guess what it did? He's a hero. Will Smith, in one single slap, became a hero. Because black, most black women and black men empathize with what he did. And that is the gynocracy. Because if you look on the other side, all the other groups say, you know, that was for that little thing, for that supposed slight, which it really wasn't that big of a deal. It should have never happened. In other words, grow up. But they don't understand how the black community works. And they don't understand the gynocracy. And they don't understand the batteries and the chip that put in our brain, right? As soon as they put a battery in our back, we're gonna run like the little, run around like the little minion, like the little minion robot to do the queen's bidding even in the red pill space the red pill space is supposed to be you know less than five percent even that split down the middle and i have been stunned i mean literally stunned to hear it come out of the brothers in, in this space's mouth they all of a sudden guys that would never think about putting on their cape all of a sudden they went to the closet dusted it off they put on their blue suede shoes and put on their their, their, their white night cape and in their white suit and and their white gloves and jumped off the building. When Polly's in trouble, I am not slow. It was hip, 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 and away I go, okay? The underdog puts on the cake, and I am stunned. I am really stunned. So I thought the brothers were gonna shake it off and wake up. And you know what? The younger brothers, I think, uh, have done that. Because it's not the younger brothers that feel that way. I have to say that this is generational split, which I said it was generational split. Hell, when Kevin does his men's month right and he, he talks about black men opening their options right and going other places and dealing with other groups now there's going to be a small percentage of black men that are going to do that they're going to go SYSBM, go overseas uh, seek other groups of women right tiny percentage right and they get all kind of help they get talked about left and right and these are supposed to be red pill brothers right they, they get all kind of help from their red pill brothers and you know what? It was baffling to me. Well, it shouldn't have been baffling, but it was baffling to me. Even though I kind of understood it, that they really didn't want to leave and they didn't want to give off the plantation, that their programming really tied them to, to the black women no matter what. And then this happens. And I read post after post and I listen to podcast after podcast, panel after panel, and I always that but. But he shouldn't have said it. He should have been more considerate. He's a black man. He should know how black women feel about their hair. So all of a sudden, black women who are who are Klingons with a bat lift in their hands and sometimes with blood dripping from it are, are snowflakes. The roughest, toughest, hard-headed, most hard-headed group of women on the planet. And all of a sudden, when you talk about their hair, you make a joke about their hair, all of a sudden they become snowflakes. And it was that moment I know that the Eidos community is probably doomed, in my opinion, probably doomed. Because either one or two things are going to have to happen. Somebody's going to have to submit. Somebody's going to have to change, right? Either black men are going to have to go ahead and put their testicles in mama's pocketbook and be good with it and let them lead and become the sin eater for whatever comes out of their mouth. Or black women are going to have to change the way they do business. Because if that had been a white woman, and he had said the exact same thing about a white woman's head. She gave that little curtsy smile. <laughs> she might have been upset. 
and she might have gone back to her dressing room and cried. But in public, she would have get that little curtsy smile and she'd have kept it pushing. Not all this drama. And a white man would have told, oh dear, you know how comedians are. And it's part of the show. But black men, we got to get up and we got to throw hands. And we don't think that we're a man uh, if we don't get up and throw hands because of a G.I. Jane joke. Grow the fuck up. And I thought black men, especially in this spirit, space, are probably more mature than that. And I, I'm, I'm just listening to all the gym, mental gymnastics that these guys have to go through to actually justify even thinking about putting your hands on somebody or even thinking about being upset about a small little joke because her feelings got hurt. Not her body, not her money, not, not a threat against her person, not a roast or she's severely insulted because her feelings got hurt by one little tiny joke. It shouldn't have meant anything. Now we have to, the comedians have to think of what kind of little joke or insult they got to get hurled at. We throw, we throw insult. I mean, huge insults at white people. If the insults and jokes we throw at white people as, as black comedians, they'd have burned, man, they'd, they'd have lynched every one of us if that was the case, if in proportion. We can throw insults at gays and lesbians and white folks and anybody else and, and, and black men, but you talk about a black woman's hair, all of a sudden those are fighting words. I'm, that's deserving of a slap across the face. That's deserving of a fight, especially on national TV. I don't agree with how you handle it, but I do understand. I mean, Negro, you shouldn't even got upset. In your position, you shouldn't even got upset. And Jada should have told him, Jada should have been the first one to grab it. Even Jada didn't think it was that serious because she thought it was a gag. There's video out of her out there that she thought it was a gag. It was part of the act. She wasn't that upset, but it don't matter. It's how we perceive ourselves. If we can't be the champion in the eyes of our woman, then we are not a man. Because we still define ourselves by how our women see us. And I said that. I said that from the very beginning, when I first started the freaking channel. What Dr. Johnson developed that term, CocuSurf, for black men. Because that's what we are. The way we have sex, the way we think about sex, it is not even in the masculine realm. It's about serving black women giving them the maximum pleasure, giving them the maximum protection, giving them the maximum resources. That's how we define ourselves. We don't want to go out and conquer and overthrow white supremacy for ourselves. We want to go overthrow white supremacy because our women told us to. I hear guys online talking about overthrowing the most powerful government, military and government on the planet that lays waste to millions of people. And they want to go, go to war with this entity why? Not because you feel it's right, but it's because your woman told you to. Because your woman told you you wasn't shit unless you were with the white supremacy. So that's the reason that we think that way. And guys attack me. The first thing they attack, the first thing they attack me about is you ain't got no woman. Like I have to have a woman to validate my manhood. I'm not a man unless I got a woman by my side. Even though I'm 62 years old and I'm a grandfather of four, just the mere fact of having children and grandchildren means that I've been validated by women because they have my babies. Have to be validated by being attractive to a woman. Well, a lot of guys come on here for because they want to be validated. They want to be validated by women. They want to be validated by their women instead of fucking validating themselves. So no matter how much red pill knowledge you throw into them, no matter how you try to reprogram that chip, it's still there. And you know what? The, 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 the freaking fucking thing that upsets me is most of you niggas will not admit it that it's there. I know it's there. I have to fight with it every day because I feel it pull on me. Even though the women in my family knows I'm not down with the gynocracy. Never have been. That's probably why I'm not married because I've never been down with it. I should have gone. I should have jumped ship and gone to another culture like my brother did. I know how the women in my family are. I know how the women in the group are. Even the nicest, wealthiest women that I've met are still black who they are and you know what I've grown to appreciate them by not even trying to change who they are I accept who they are and thing is I have to you know they who they're that's who they are that's the material that I have to work with so basically what can I get done for my black men and my black boys with the material I have to work with because they're not gonna change they can't change hell you can't even get, can't get the black men that's supposed to be freaking red pill to change how, how the fuck you gonna change the goddamn women you're not can't change yourself. You can't change your own goddamn programming, even if you disagree with it. 
How the fuck you gonna change theirs? You're not. This whole manosphere thing, this whole red pill space, this whole the whole talking points, what we how we talk about women is not to fucking change the goddamn women. It's to change you. To recognize what tethers that they have on you. So you can see black women as they are, not how they told you that they are. Every time you get them in front of a mic, they tell you who they are. But guess what? Your chip, your program will not accept it. I'll give you an example. And, and you know, we're, we're going to wrap this up because I don't want to go get this to go too long. And in other words, if I start ranting, man, that'll be an hour. Because like Chris Rock said, this is a nice one. This is a nice one. Man, you don't know the disappointment I felt over this last week. I have never felt this, this, this disappointed in black men in my freaking life. Because I saw the face of it. I saw the face of it. I saw the face of the gynocracy and it was, was not female. And my heart sunk. The underlying face of gynocracy is not female. It's that chip that's in black men's brains that they cannot fucking turn off. And as soon as it gets activated, it jumps out the closet and turns on just like a killer robot, just like the winter soldier being activated against his will. No pun intended. But I'm gonna give you an example, man. And I have no problem with Steph Cole. She's 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 a smart girl. She's a regular girl. She's got issues, but she's no different than 90% of the chicks that are in the Ados community. Okay. And the problem that I have is Nicki Minaj has been beautiful since she was born, right? Pretty girl, really pretty girl. Eight, about an eight, eight or so, give or take. Say the same thing with say, a chick like Melanie King that's, that's not in this space, but thing is, is doing red pill reactions, stuff like that, okay? And these guys wanna dream, drag these people down to a five or a six, right? Okay, your standard may be high given i don't really crack on people's standards even though i think they can we can delusional sometimes like what are you really seeing but i get a chick like stefco who's obviously a four not even a question that she's a four obviously a four you know how many guys i have to fight with is trying to bring her up oh man she's not that bad she's she's average she's a five maybe five and a half I said are you freaking kidding me I had guys argue with me about her until i show her putting on makeup then all of a sudden they've started backsliding and backtracking. But that's not the that's not the issue. That's not the issue. The issue is anytime that that battery is connected to that gynocracy chip, the cape is gonna come out. Just like Moon Knight, right? That that inner gynocratic chip will turn that person on and all of a sudden that costume's gonna come out and the Avengers gonna come out and all of a sudden they're gonna change. That's why the Chris Rock thing, Will Smith thing brought it to light. I, that's why I knew that he was going to be able to change his image, right? Because I knew that mo the majority of black people are going to ride with what he did. And the majority of black, a those black folks are going to get behind what he did, no matter what. He was going to change his image. And that he did. I think it was done intentionally. So, but the thing is, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It was masterful. Because what he did was activate that gynocratic chip that's in black men's and black women's brains. So 90% of the people are going to be sympathetic to him. But what it showed me is that as much as you think that you can enlighten people and show, give people information and show them the way the system works, it doesn't matter. The program is the program. Now, I still might do it. I was planning on showing you how I think is the setup, how I think that this is manipulated, how do, how I think this is a psyop. And I still might do it, but the thing is, at this particular moment, I don't even feel like doing it because I don't think it's going to do any good. Because it doesn't matter. Matter if it's a lie. Doesn't matter if it's pretended. Doesn't matter if it's scripted. Okay. At the end of the day, that chip was activated, and the program will run. And I, as a black pill person, have to face facts that this is the reality. And this is what you're up against. 80% of black men voted Democratic because the fucking women told them to. That's how come you can have like 50 of the roughest, toughest guys. You can put one chick in there talking shit and she can count all 50 of them. All 50. Because it's embedded into the culture. It's locked into who we are. It's a, We're a gynocratic people. And Chris Rock and Will Smith actually showed us that in spades that's who we are the queen cannot be displeased 
protect the queen not only from assault but perceived slights. Y'all might as well get back on the you know get back on the plantation. Stop pretending. Maybe tomorrow I'll feel differently. Maybe tomorrow something will prove me wrong. Hope you know what I hope that something proves me wrong. I really do. But at the end of the day, I can only work with what I with what I have. Okay, these are my people. These are the women that I have. These are the men that I have, and this is the way they're programmed. So the thing is, just like anything else, you're gonna have to find a workaround. And just like any system, right? Whether it's a Mac, whether it's a Windows, whether it's Unix, whether it's Linux, it doesn't matter, right? You can only do things within the limits of the pro uh, of the operating system, right? Pluses and minuses on all of them. You can only work with what you have. That's going to be my focus. I'm going to work with what I have. I'm not going to assume that, that black men can be woken up, right? Because as soon as you think you you, you can, as, as far down the path as you lead them, they activate that chip. And here it comes. Anyway, that's all I got. I'm tired of fussing. Really, man, that's, you know, I'm, I'm serious, man. I started reading this shit and listening to this shit. Man, it damn near broke my heart. Damn near broke my heart. If I was a younger man, I'd be on a you know, slow boat to China. I'm like Black Mind. You got to get the fuck out of the West, man. Because these Negroes are... I know they're not gone, man. They are who they are. I once told a guy, the system is working exactly the way it's supposed to work. How come black boys can only read at 10% of the average, of the national average? Only at 10% of grade level? Because the system is working the way it's supposed to work. How come there's so many homeless black men? Because the system is working the way it's supposed to work. How come black men are disadvantaged and underemployed? And no matter how how they fight for whatever they're going to fight for, they reap uh, a little to almost no benefit for fighting for it because the system is the way it's supposed to work, including your women. And the guys have no problem with being in their place. It is what it is. But with that, I'm going to jump off here. This is BGS out, and I'll see you.